okay so in the last lecture we kind of stopped here we got the equation which governs this particular system or equation of motion for this particular system as shown here now now here i have explicitly given we are only talking about harmonic base excitation so having the having explained the reason why we are talking only about harmonic excitation now i can go ahead and substitute for the displacement of the base like this again this is for making our analysis simpler so let's say if my base is varying like this having a variation and having a profile like this then i can write this as real part of a e raised to omega t now whatever response i get for this system then the response for this kind of uh, excitation will be the real part of the the excitation sorry the real part of the response what we will get here the same applies here also this i have explained a lot of times so i hope that is clear to you now so this is a frequency at which your base is actually getting excited then this is the amplitude now as usual now we have to come up with a prediction for the response so let's assume that little x of t will vary as capital x of i omega times e raised i omega t so the same assumption holds here excitation is having a frequency of omega so my response will also have a frequency of omega and if you have a doubt why i am writing this x bracket i omega then i am closing the bracket this is just to convey the message that this particular quantity is a complex number and it is dependent on the forcing free what is the forcing frequency so just to convey this this particular notation is used nothing you don't have to worry as this is uh, you don't have to treat this particular thing as something alien okay now let's um try manipulating the equation or plugging in whatever assumptions we made over a minute over the last minute so now in this place we are only manipulating the right hand side so it was initially ky plus cy dot now we are plugging the derivatives of this quantities and finally we are arriving here simple differential calculus nothing else now coming to this side also again simple differential calculates we are we assume that little x is equal to capital x of i omega times e raised i omega t i can show you that if you like so i assume that x of i omega e raised i omega t so my x dot will be x of i omega is not varying with respect to your time so it can be treated as a constant when you are calculating x dot i omega e raised i omega t so this is same as your i omega x similarly if we go ahead and compute x double dot then it will be minus omega square little x so once we plug in this all this stuff here then we will get this so going ahead x of t can be written like this simple mathematical manipulation of dividing the numerator and the denominator by little k which is the stiffness of the system we will arrive at this now if you carefully observe except the numerator the term in the denominator then that is our frequency response so now after making that substitution of substitution for frequency response we arrive here few things to note so the response x of t is equal to capital a which is the amplitude at which your base is getting excited then this particular quantity times the frequency response c i'm not taking a modulus simple here 
and putting the complex num number this will be a complex number in for this particular case this is one so i'm putting the number as it is i'm not taking any modulus or anything e raised i omega t now i can combine these two and calculate um, the magnitude like if you need more explanation these two are two complex numbers i can combine them and get one single complex number in the form of a plus i b then later convert that this particular complex number to r e raised i theta form so that the advantage of what i am getting is i can easily multiply this with this and i can get my phase angle of the response so that's how the whole methodology kind of spans out uh, one thing in order to avoid confusion i can also write this as e raised i phi so maybe theta is not at all used so in all the previous lectures i was using phi for the phase angle so let it be phi throughout this course now so we started assuming an amplitude for the response given by capital x of i omega now after doing this all these mathematical manipulations now in this particular step if we compare these two equations then this complex amplitude can be written as the product of three terms as shown here capital a this term and your frequency response now obviously we are interested in since this is the amplitude of the response we are interested in how the magnitude of this quantity will vary now the magnitude of this particular quantity can be written as like this modulus sorry for the small delay mm, yeah so so modulus of x of i omega can be written as so you have two complex number multiplying together so their modulus will be the product of their individual modulus so here you have root of 1 plus 2 zeta r whole square the root goes root is applicable throughout then in the denominator not in the denominator that you know the what will be the modulus of g of i omega we have already computed it so in the numerator we have one but in the denominator we have a long expression i keep seeing this never ever forget the square because i've missed it out quite a few times so i don't want any of the persons who listen to this video to again miss the square term for r to zeta or whole square so finally we have a expression we have an expression for the magnitude or the mag for the amplitude of the response so now we have computed the amplitude the second important thing is the phase angle phase angle of the response now we want to know how phase angle of this particular response will vary with respect to our excitation frequency for that purpose what we have to do we have two complex numbers here so let's add so let's um, multiply them together so if if we go ahead and do it will be capital a times 1 plus i 2 zeta r divided by my g of I omega will be pl pl plus 1 minus r square so now this is the complex number now we want to fi find out what is the phase angle of this quantity so the way how we do that is like this 
now we have a complex number here so try to write this complex number in the form a plus ib then the phi or the phase angle is given by tan inverse b by a see one other thing i want to show here is that or to tell you i'm not going to prove it let's say lambda is a constant then this will be a new <coughs> new uh, complex number if lambda is a constant but the phase remains the same because uh, this can be thought of as like this L let's say i have a complex number like this so now i have a complex number here if i am multiplying it with a scalar quantity then what really happens is let me use a different color for a your better understanding so what happens is it gets actually scaled it 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 gets scaled it magnitude changes but the orientation still remains the same so in that way the phase angle of a complex number doesn't change when it is multiplied by a scalar so just treat this as a result now so the best way to do this uh, to convert this into a form this particular expression into form of a plus ib is that dividing both sides with the complex conjugate of the denominator so that we get a scalar quantity here because a plus ib multiplying with a minus ib will give me a square plus b square so that's what you see here then um, once we do all the manipulations correctly we will end up we will uh, arrive at an expression like this so here is the final expression now if you look at this closely this is a scalar value this is a scalar value now this is the complex number where this whole quantity is the a and this whole quantity is the b now see we should not forget we were writing we were trying to figure out an expression for x of i omega we have already found out the magnitude so now x of i omega can be written as modulus of x of i omega which we have already computed times e raised let's say psi okay now this psi is defined like this tan psi should be minus 2 zeta r cube divided by 1 minus r square plus 2 zeta r whole square but i don't want to represent for certain reasons i don't want to represent it like this like e raised i psi i want to represent it like this let's say i want to represent it as modulus of x of i omega e raised i minus e raised phi that means my phi is given by minus psi that means what does that mean so that means let me just pull it here so that means my tan 5 which is minus tan psi will be given by 2 zeta r cube see there is no more minus sign over there 1 minus r square plus 2 zeta r whole square so if you remember the expression for phase angle in the first two case studies one the case one for which the excitation was simply harmonic and the second case study in which we had a rotating unbalance in those two con for those two conditions the expression for tan phi was slightly different it was different it was different from this so for the case study of harmonic base excitation the formula of phase angle is slightly different now let's try to assemble or to sum up whatever we have learned in this segment so we started our discussion saying that we have a system connected to the base where the base is exciting like this 
then we went ahead and uh, tried to figure out what will be the response we assumed the response uh, taking a shape like this taking a form like this then we calculated what will be the magnitude of that amplitude then we found out it in terms of the system parameters as well as the forcing frequency then we went ahead and thought about there will be a definite phase difference or a phase angle for the response then we computed what will be the phase angle for the response like this so here it is again a function of our system parameters and the forcing frequency so that's it thanks for watching